Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. In today's video, we are going to see how easy it is to create a Pi-hole instance via Docker on a Synology NAS. Now, I decided to go ahead and throw out this video even though there are a lot of very good uh, tutorials out there online and on YouTube. Uh, for several reasons, the first one being that most of the tutorials out there are done on DSM version 6. I just wanted to go ahead and throw out this video on version on DSM version 7.1 just so that there will be an updated version for people to see and uh, learn from. The second reason is that most tutorials, if they'll touch this subject at all, they will show you that once you have your PyHole instance ready, you should start to go, to go ahead and divert or change clients, uh, DNS server, at least the primary DNS server, IP address, to the IP address of the PyHole. This works and this definitely a, a, a legitimate uh, deployment. And then I see a lot of uh, people uh, posting questions. Uh, for example, I have mobile phones, so how can I utilize the PyHole to be used on my uh, mobile phones and tablets on my internal network? And this can be done. It requires a little bit of tinkering, not, not too much, but some. So for a lot of people, I think that this realm is, uh, remains an enigma. And the, the second reason that, I'm, uh, that, I that I want to do, uh, suggest a different type of deployment is that with my suggested method, you will have a 100% whole network filtering, regardless of uh, what client it is, what villain it's connected to, if it's wired or wireless, Again, your mileage may vary. You will need a, a firewall that supports changing the DNS servers of your ISP. But this is basically what we are going to create. We are going, we, are, we have our client devices right here. We are going to create a PyHole instance on our Synology NAS. And what we are going to do is we are not going to direct clients directly to the PyHole. We are going to allow the clients to receive an IP address of a DNS server from the firewall and usually the, the DNS server that create that it's be, that is being created by default is the IP address of the firewall will continue to use that this means that we have minimal uh, in configurations to do on the client side so the IP address for example if our network is 192.168.99.1 the IP address of the, D the primary DNS server will be 192.168.99, sorry, .1. And on our internet settings, what we are going to do, we are going to stop using our ISP DNS servers, or if we are, we are using 8.8.8 .8 or 1.1.1, we are going to stop doing that. We are going to tell the, uh, the firewall that its primary DNS server is the address of the pie hole. And then every query that's reaching our firewall will be diverted to the pie hole. What needs to be blocked will be blocked. What can be allowed to go out will be a, a, a queried against a top level DNS server, for example, Cloudflare. And if it's a legitimate a service, the IP address will be queried and received by the, by the pie hole server and diverted back to the firewall and then the traffic goes out through the firewall to the great white in internet this means that the client itself doesn't need to change any configurations on it there are downsides to this uh, deployment there are upsides one of the downsides is that in pihole in the interface you will not see individual clients the only client you will see will be the firewall itself it will be the only one actually querying the PyHole server. But again, this is the a drawback. The, the main advantage is that you will get a whole network filtering. So let's go ahead and start in the beginning how to create this PyHole instance on Docker on Synology. Let's go ahead and I have a virtual DSM instance I've already created. What you will need to do, of course, is to first of all download the Docker application, if you haven't done so already, just go to the package center, all packages, scroll a bit down, Docker will be right here, you will get an install button if you haven't already installed it, mine says open because I've already installed it. When you install Docker, you will see that the installation will already create 
a shared folder called Docker. So let's go ahead in file station and we will need to create inside this Docker folder a new folder called Pyhole. That's great. Let's go ahead inside this uh, uh, folder and create two additional folders. The other one will be again called Pyhole and the other one will be called I have a cheat sheet that I have uh, that I will share with you in the comments of this video will be called dnsmask.d That's great. We have our uh, infrastructure ready. Let's open up Docker. And since we don't have anything yet created, we'll go into registry and search for pyhole. And the first result is pyhole slash pyhole. Let's click on download and click on latest. This will now grab the pyhole image from uh, the Docker registry. All right, this took about two minutes and the image was successfully downloaded. Now that we have the image downloaded, we can click on launch. We'll select same network as Docker host. This will mean that the IP address of the web interface of the Pyhole will be the exact same IP address of your Synology NAS and same network. Let's give it a name. Let's keep it on Pyhole. All right, nothing needs to be done here. Let's click on advanced settings. All right, there are several attributes that we will need to manually add to this list of attributes. Again, the cheat sheet is your friend. Let's click, let's select web password. This will be the password to log in to the pie hole. And let's give it a password of, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, please choose a, a, a real password. Let's click on web port. This will be the port to enter to the web interface. Let's select 8888. Let's add another one. DNS mask listening. And this will be local. And the server IP is an attribute that should already be there. We will need to apply the IP address of the Synology NAS. That's great. By the way, if you're not, if you don't remember the IP address of your Synology NAS, you can look for it on your firewall DHCP if you're using DHCP, or you can open up control panel, go to network, network interface, and this will be the IP address that you need to enter here. Let's click on save, click on next, and here we'll need to add a folder. Click on add a folder, select the pie hole folder that we created and select the first one will be DNS mask D. That's great. And we will need to mount this folder to the internal etc slash DNS mask D. This actually mounts the folder from inside the Docker image to a folder on our Synology NAS. Let's do this process again. Click on add a folder and now select the pie hole folder and we'll mount it to etc slash pyhole. That's great. Now we can uh, definitely run this container after the wizard finishes. Now, if we done things correctly, we will we'll be able to open up a, a virtual machine or a physical machine that's connected to the same network as your Synology NAS, and we'll be able to, con uh, to connect to the web interface. But before that, if you're using Synology a, a, a firewall. I'm not using them because this is a VDSM instance that will be deleted after this video tutorial is done. But just for the sake of demonstrating, let's click on, let's say that I've enabled firewall, click on edit rules. We will need to add the port that we've assigned the web interface, that's TCP. And we'll need to create another one, keep it as all right here, because Usually DNS traffic is UDP, but nowadays DNS traffic also starts being used on TCP. So the port will be 53 protocols. Keep it on all. 
and click OK and click OK. Great. Now let's see if we've done things correctly. Let's open up a virtual machine that's on the same network as the Synology NAS. And let's try to go into the web interface. Sorry. All right, great. So you can see that we have our in, in, we have our Pi-hole instance ready to be worked with and configured. Let's click on login. And this will be our super secret password. Great. So the, the Pi-hole is ready to be configured. The first thing that we need to do is go into settings and DNS. And from here, we'll decide which DNS server will be our top level server. It can be in Google or it can, it can be Cloudflare, whichever works best for you. Click on save. That's great. So if we've done things correctly, if we'll start diverting clients to a, a, a query DNS with a pie hole as their DNS server, we'll start seeing some traffic, but we are not going to do it. By the way, if that's the path that you want to do, that's great. You can just open up if you want to go manual into network settings and change the DNS server to the IP address of the Pi-hole server. And this will work. By the way, if I'll open up an incognito window and let's go to some site, I don't know, CNN.com. You can see that CNN doesn't have ads now on it. And the other side of things, if we we'll go back to our Pi-hole, we can start seeing queries that are being blocked. Our dashboard already shows some movement, but this is not the way that I want to go. I'm going to switch back to automatic or DNS servers via DHCP because I want to go a different route. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to log in into my, at least for me, it will be my Unify firewall. I have a UDM Pro. I'm going to the network settings. Again, your mileage may vary if you're using a different vendor firewall. All you need to do is to change the IP address of your, your internet provider. So I'm going to go into settings, internet. I'm going to select my internet connection. And as you can see, I've changed my DNS servers to be 8.8.8 .8 and the secondary 8.8.4.4. I'm going to change that that will be my secondary server. For example, if something goes wrong and my Synology NAS needs to be shut down or something happened to it, I am going to have some sort of an, a, a public a, a DNS server to a, a reply my queries. Otherwise, I will not have a, a DNS connectivity at all. That's the main goal, the primary server I'm going to change. I'm going to change it to my Pi-hole server, meaning 182.168.99.190. This is the Pi-hole server that we've just configured and I'm going to click on apply changes. So what we have done now is we have created, we have created a Pi-hole instance on our Synology NAS, and we've created a situation where the clients continue to get their DNS server from the DHCP. Most often it's the IP address of the firewall itself. By the way, if it's not the way in your case, you will need to change the DHCP assigned DNS server to be the IP address of your firewall, not the pie hole, the firewall. All right. So then when queries are made from the clients to the firewall, DNS queries, I, I mean, it will direct them to the pie hole, meaning not outside to the internet, internally to the pie hole. And the pie hole will take care of the resolving to an external Cloudflare or DNS or a Google DNS server. And then once it's resolved, meaning a name is resolved to an IP address, then the traffic will be allowed to go out through the firewall. In order to prove it, now on this virtual machine, I have nothing in regards to DHCP configured. In fact, my DHCP, my DHCP server, if I'll go into IP config, all my DHCP server has assigned me a DNS server 
of 182.168.1.99.1, uh, meaning that my DNS server is in fact my firewall. So if I'll open up a, a web browser right now, I should still go into CNN and ads should still be uh, uh, filtered for me because my firewall in regards to its DNS server goes to my Pi-hole server and uh, the uh, traffic is filtered there. Let's go into CNN.com. And as you can see, although I am not using the Pi-hole DNS server directly as my DNS server, the firewall does it for me. It also does it on my mobile phones and my tablets and filters and uh, DNS really filters my ads. And as you can, if you saw my previous video about blocking more than just ads on Pi-hole, you can see how important it is. And now the Pi-hole is actually playing a part. It, not, it doesn't stand on its own, but it's playing a part on my security posture on my network. So I hope this was informative for you guys. Thank you guys for watching. And I hope to see you all on my next video. Bye everyone.